here with Annie Trowbridge. Annie, thank you so much for agreeing to do this with us. It's not like we don't have 7,310 farmers <laughs> in New York State, to be exact at this point, based on the census, but I don't have 7,310 times a day to be able to go and reach out. So we came to you and Trowbridge Farms here in Get New York to make this cool, Every day, an easy recipe that you can throw together if you just don't have a lot of time, right? And it is a, a hamburger stroganoff, right? Yes. So, how did this recipe come to be? And we got it out of the tried and true <laughs> Betty Crocker cookbook. Look at that. This is this is a good cookbook when you can see that it's tattered and worn. Yes, that's most definitely my go-to. Your go-to. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. How, why this recipe? Well, it turned out that um, in uh, the start of our marriage, actually, which is almost 43 years ago, yeah. my husband is not a fan of additives, so to speak, <laughs> to anything. So with our meat, I usually don't try to be too creative. I just, you know, do it uh, on the grill or plain. But this turned out to be a a great cold weather uh, alternative to uh, to it, something different with the burger. Well, and, you know, and ground beef is so versatile. You can yes. make burgers out of it mm -hmm. or put it in a casserole like mm -hmm. this. And it's not necessarily going to be baked with the casserole. It's going to be, it's a hamburger right. stroganoff. Mm -hmm. We're going to put it over noodles. Right. So let's look at all the ingredients in the recipe here that we're going to be doing. And, and um, so we need, uh, let's see, some dairy sour cream. Mm -hmm which we are here, and you're going to need a cup of that. Yeah. And we need a can of condensed cream of mushroom soup. Mm -hmm. There we go, there we go. And a can of eight ounces of mushroom stems and pieces drained. Excellent. And we got a little bit of pepper in here. Mm -hmm. And we have some minced garlic. Yep. Let's see, some salt is already mixed in here. Yes. Butter, we're going to use a quarter cup of butter. Uh, nothing's better than butter. Right. And, um, and we have an onion. And it calls for about a half a cup, but you mentioned Phil's not a man. Oh, He's in, not an onion fan, so yeah. All right, so, and the most important ingredient, ground beef. The burger. So you want to grab the ground beef, and I got a pot of water here. How about if I turn that on? Okay. So we can boil our noodles. Water. So we're going to be using your ground beef today. Yes. That's fantastic. And so since obviously you guys are beef farmers because this is Trowbridge Beef Farm, I'm going to ask some questions about the farm and your life here and, and how long you've, well basically, how long have you been here at Trowbridge Farms here in Ghent? We established Trowbridge Farms in 2005 is when we moved here and uh, established our, our own uh, farm. We had purchased this land very early on um, as a, oh, just a, an extra little uh, land for whatever might happen and whatever uh, we wanted to use it for. So we built a barn. We used to have sales, uh, the same barn, actually, that we continue to have sales. So, uh, so we just did a little of that, and, and then we moved here in 2005, we built the house. So now, Bill uh, right now is currently the president of the New York Beef Producers Association. We've done a lot of tours here, we've done group tours, I've done one-on-one -on -one tours. I've cooked in this kitchen before by myself, uh, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and had dinner with some uh, social influencers and everything, so I knew this would be a great kitchen and a great opportunity to do something fun. And, and unique and you were mentioning before and I had cut you off because we wanted to talk about it here is that Phil's just not a adventurous cooker or no. eater and of sorts so it gets boring doesn't it? It does. So it does. And he actually likes this? Yes. Fantastic. I just well you know I have to alter the onion a little bit but so the rest of the ingredients he's a fan of so. I have a little secret my husband doesn't like onions. So if he's watching this right now, turn it off. He's like onions. 
He has no idea for the last 28 years he has been having onions because I use it in the form of like an onion powder or yes. granulated onion mm -hmm. to flavor. So that's my little secret and tidbit is that if they don't like the onion because they don't want to see it, then by all means, there are other ways it's going to catch. That's right. So how about if I chop this up and then okay. we're going to, you're melting some butter here yes. because Betty Crocker Man back in the day, there's nothing wrong with butter. That's right. So, and how much, about a pound of uh, ground beef? This is a pound of ground beef. Awesome, this beef looks yeah. fantastic. So you get, a, get going with that. Okay. And uh, so, um, so what type of, uh, what uh, type of breed do you, does uh, you and your family raise? Uh, primarily uh, black Angus, yeah. and um, but we do have um, a few Herefords, a few Red Angus. Um, got to I saw a Hereford down there too. Does that the Hereford well, show? Or? That would be uh, my granddaughter's uh, show animal. Very good. She she likes to uh, I don't know. Look outside the box, if you will. So not unlike her grandfather. <laughs> no. Not at all. So, what generation is Phil, and then how many generations are actually running this farm? Because oh gracious, um, he he's now his family, which is uh, from Western New York, for few. Um, he's. He would be the eighth of nine children. Wow. And so it's one of nine. One of nine. And I add yeah. that to this. Or do uh, I yep, you can. And so he, uh, what happened and to this day, his family farm is still there. And uh, his uh, oldest brother lives next door to the farmhouse. And our nephew, his oldest son, lives in the, the farmhouse where he grew up. Um, and each um, child, each boy actually, ran the farm as if um, with the finances and everything, the feeding, the program, uh, everything about it. And so each one passed on as they went out into college and whatever. So that's where Phil got his start. And then uh, we met, that's where we met is in college. And uh, he came down here, uh, worked for a farm two days after graduation. So, uh -huh. and that'll be, that was in 1976. So, yeah. Wow. I think, oh, speak of the devil. <laughs> He's sneaky. He's sneaky. Phil will be back. He's going to make sure we're doing this right because he is the expert. So not that everybody's out of the house. Do you cook often or do you make meals and then you eat them throughout the week? We, I cook almost every night um, unless we're not going to be home for any reason. And then he and the boys eat the leftovers for lunches uh, the next couple of days if I tend to make enough. I've never learned to just cook for two people, I guess, after the kids left, so. Now, has this recipe gone to the next generation as well? Uh, or? No. No? Uh, no, I, I might just stop right asked, yeah. All right, so it it's could. up to everybody else to take it. To That's take right. It That's for right. sure. So, as we are here and, and, we're, and we're talking farmer recipes and cooking on the farm, etc., is what would you like the general public to know about the beef industry and what you and Phil and your your family does here on the farm? Well, uh, first of all, I don't think, and I don't come from a, a farming family. I don't either. Um, but I can't think of another way to, uh, to have a life. Our children have, I, I couldn't have asked for a better, you know, um, experiences for them, the people we've met, you know, just everything about the, our farming community even. And our local uh, community is 
their, their understanding, their, um, it's just, it's just been a wonderful place to, to grow up and a great business. The endless friends, the, uh, the business, we've managed to uh, earn our living that way, which is, is something to be said after all these years and so yeah, it Fantastic. makes for a, a wonderful life. Because it's not just like a steak. A steak you can cook and after a certain temperature you don't have to worry about um, E. coli or what have you. But with ground beef you're taking that outside and inside and it's mixing mm -hmm. together. So you have to cook ground beef to 160 degrees. Which when it's like this it's really kind of hard to take a temperature of it. But what we have to focus on is that all the pink is gone for yes, sure. Correct. So that's really and yep. cutting it and breaking it down into smaller pieces is really beneficial as well. Yep. So that's really, really important when working with ground beef is that 160. When it comes to a burger, it's like a medium. So mm -hmm. it's still lightly pink so people don't have to think, right. oh my God, I beat my ground beef all done. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. So now that we have the onion and a little bit of onion and the ground beef, what are we going to add here? This is kind of like a, a dump recipe of sorts? Yes. We're going to uh, put in our two um, tablespoons of flour. Tablespoons we have some flour. salt, uh -huh. pepper, and a clove of garlic. Okay. So what time does Phil usually start his day? Uh, we both start pretty early. Now you um, work off the farm, and what I is do. it that you do? I am a nurse at a nearby community hospital, about eight miles away. And so I start my day pretty early at f around four o'clock. I wake up in the morning to, and I work here on the farm books for about an hour and a half. And then I get ready, and I have to report to work at eight, uh, seven o'clock. We're going to add the mushrooms. All right. Now, did you ever use fresh mushrooms? Yes, I, I, if I have them, I would prefer that. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. So it's good, good old comfort food, tried yes. and true. Yeah. And that's what we like. Let me do this for a few minutes. I love this kettle. <laughs> it's, I mean, the only thing that's missing are like the sticks and a, a, a yes. fire and, yeah. and, uh, Somebody with a bandana putting chili in it and mixing one it up of, at the campfire. Uh, one of our friends gave that to me about two years ago. Found a few of them at, a, at an antique place in Ohio and he thought of me. So I use it all the time. I love it. So you mentioned your granddaughter has uh, the cattle and they show cattle. Mm -hmm. and. Um, are they very much involved with the, some of the daily operations, you know, when they're not in school especially, but even probably before and after school they're doing chores? Very much. Um, the, my son, who, our son, who is, uh, lives right across the road and is really a, uh, our partner and the major, other than Phil, the major uh, participant here at the farm. Uh, he has three daughters, uh, Daisy, who's 14. Who is very active in showing. She's um, also a, an officer of the junior uh, beef producers, and um, and she sh she's the one that shows uh, the cattle. Um, and she's also a great equestrian. She she rides. She's been riding since she was three or four years old, and she's really wonderful at it. And then Lily, who is five. Uh, she does a lot of showing on her own and uh, does a really good job. Uh, we certainly help her, but she has great enthusiasm. And, I've seen uh, her in her pink little boots yes. all sequined up, yes. and she stands about like this tall, and yes. she's talking to an animal like this tall, yes. and that animal's listening. So, no, she impressive. is. She and she is very excited, very helpful. She goes out uh, on the farm whenever she can. Whenever she's not in school, she's little kindergartner and um, and then we have Rosie who's three soon to be four she'll tell you and um, and she goes out every morning with the guys and they start around uh, seven o'clock and then she has preschool a couple times a week so she 
and she does that and she's very and has no fear about she would love to show more than she can but uh, yeah she, she she does when she can so so our water's boiling here yes. do we yes add, and about how much of that bag the full bag I mean I suppose I would that they're say, gonna uh, we could do the whole bag and it'd be okay, okay. Uh, uh, The noodles. All those together. That's right. More comfort food. It's all my daddy. It's pasta. It's pasta. I said, don't forget the meatballs. Now so she might. We can put the soup in. We oh want yeah, that right here. Okay. So what is. Some people don't understand, like, the cattle showing. And I have to. I have to agree to some extent because I didn't grow up in agriculture and uh, I suppose you you got the little bit. I didn't grow up in agriculture. So what is the essence of showing cattle other than just you know, trimming it and fluffing it and making it look pretty and walking around a ring? Well, it starts really with um, what you what your goals are for that. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have a Say when Daisy starts her planning uh, and she has a calf, then uh, almost immediately they start making sure that the mama is uh, nursing well and that the calf is growing and that everything about the calf or, and the mom, because sometimes they do show cow and a calf, uh, is, is nice, healthy and they start working with them, handling them, uh, moving them uh, around to get used to people because that's important. And, uh, and then just working with them, feeding them properly, of course, good uh, maintenance and, and management. And then working with them is the, the biggest key that we could. The big part of cattle this. showing is showmanship. Yes. And that responsibility yes. and respect for the animal, etc. Yes. And oh, they become partners, you know. Um, and they certainly can make the showman um, look really good. Mm -hmm. And so there's lots of learning there uh, in terms of showmanship. And um, they, uh, they start fairly young with like a novice class or whatever and then you know grow from there and then just that's a particular class and then there's a class that will um, show just the animal and place just the animal and we do all you know Daisy does all of that. So you've just been like this with the animal for how many months uh -oh. and yeah. then you show it and then yeah. you sell it. Or well, that's a pretty difficult thing here because um, it probably started, the stress of selling an animal started with our daughter, Amy, who showed just about everywhere. And then her dad got a um, pretty wonderful offer for one of her best lines of cattle. Um, because about and genetics too. Correct? Yes, yes. And I don't know how long it was before she talked to him after uh, she <laughs> found out. But anyway, it is hard. Daisy gets attached. We, uh, even her mom, uh, Miranda, who is uh, so wonderful with the girls and gets them involved, gets the 4-H group uh, together, that kind of thing. Uh, she, it's hard on everybody that... Uh, not necessarily they they're not used to it right. like the buying selling sh showing and then selling because uh, and that's part that's of how the, yeah that's part of the industry that's mm -hmm. part of I guess the the business of it yes. is that you can't keep them all on the farm right they're not pets yeah um, they are your livelihood that's right and you know even uh, so much as maybe having uh unfortunately losing somebody you know a mm -hmm. calf or something that you know that happens you can't sugarcoat any of those things but no. it's learning and 
and they get better. You know, they they do okay. So they just don't cut their grandpa too much slack. <laughs> and then grandpa doesn't cut a lot of people slack. No. <laughs> so. I'm gonna put the sour cream yep. in now. And this ends the the ingredients, other than a little parsley. But super easy, super yeah, fast. Super. I mean, you can do this with the kids. Oh yeah. Noodles. Mm -hmm. You can do it with rice. And now you mentioned you do it an alternative way with potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Oh. Yeah. Stick to your ribs, kind well, of. Well, yeah. But this wouldn't be uh, a no low way. caloric uh, recipe, but uh, sometimes. You know what? When you cook with love, there's no calories. <laughs> That's true. Now, have you ever done it with stew meats, or has it always been ground beef? Uh, I have done it a couple of times, but this is so much easier. And yeah. again, this I can make this if I get home late. And, and we've only been doing this for not even a few minutes. I mean, right. everything. The longest mm -hmm. part was waiting for the water to boil and the the meat to yep. to brown. And yep. How how. Uh, Fantastic and easy yeah. that is. Yeah. It's almost like a <clears throat> sausage gravy, if you will. It is. Yeah. Now, Beef It's What's for Dinner actually has a, a ground beef recipe that you can add specific spices to to make it taste like um, breakfast sausage, mm -hmm. which is really good. And you know, get some biscuits off. This would mm -hmm. also be great over right. biscuits, rice, pasta, potatoes, baked potatoes, and yes. all. Yeah. I could go on and on. Can you tell I worked in food service? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think with this recipe, the or similar, it, the sky's the limit for oh my goodness, what you yeah. can. And and it's just quick and easy and it's done. Well, let's get a plate out and uh, let's okay. check on this pasta and we'll get this drained. Julia Child would say bon appetit, right? Yes. See how easy that was? That was easy.